Hi, welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 3. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 25 of Book 3, which basically states that if we have a circle segment, and here I'm showing three different types of circle segments, then it is possible to find the radius in the center of the circle, or in Euclid's words, to describe the complete circle. And how we're going to do this is first, we bisect the line AC at the point D. So D, in all three cases, has bisected the line AC. Next thing we do is we draw a line perpendicular to AC through D, and where it intersects the segment, circle segment, is point B. Draw the line AB. And now we're going to copy the angle ABD at the point A. So this angle here is equal to that angle there, here and here, and here and here. And we did this using the methods that were described in uh, book one. So now we have copied our angles. And we extend the line BD and A so that they meet at the point E. So here, they've met at the point E, and here, they've met at the point E. Now E is the center of the circle. And if E is the center of the circle, we just take one of the lines, AE as the radius, or BE as the radius, and draw our circle. And here we have drawn our circles for each different type of semicircle. So how do I prove that this is correct? So going back to our triangles that we have formed, the first thing to note that because this angle is equal to that angle, we have an isosceles triangle from Proposition 6 of Book 1. So in all three cases, we have an isosceles triangle. Now if we draw a line from E to point C, E to point C, E to point C, and we now look at ADE. In this case, it's ADE is this way, but let's look at these two triangles. We know that AD is equal to DC because we bisected the lines. So these two lines are equal, this line is common, and because we drew a line that was perpendicular, these two angles are also the same. So we have a side, angle, side, which will be equal to a side, angle, side. Similarly here, we have a side, angle, side, and a side, angle, side. Here it doesn't really make sense, but we'll deal with this example in a moment. So in these two instances, we have two triangles that are equal, according to Proposition 4, Book 1, because they have a side, angle, side that are equal. So therefore, ADE is equal to CED in these both cases, which means that this line AE is equal to EC, or AD, sorry, AE is equal to EC. So AE is equal to EC. So now we have establish that BE is equal to AE. BE is equal to AE, which is also equal to EC, which is also equal to EC in both of these cases. If we look at this middle case, where the point E is also equal to the point D, we still have that AE is equal to ED, sorry, AE is equal to AD, for obvious reasons, it's the same point. However, AE is equal to EC, since we've bisected this line to create the point D, which corresponds to the point E. So this line here is equal to this line here. And because this is a isosceles triangle, we also have that BE is equal to AD. So in all three cases, we have three lines starting at the point A that intersect the circumference 
of our circle segment where these three lines are equal. AE is equal to BE, which is equal to CE. AE is equal to BE is equal to EC, and so on. AE is equal to BE is equal to CE. So if we have more than two equal lines, so in this case we have three, from a point that reaches the circumference of the circle, then that point is the center of the circle. And that's based on Proposition 9 of Book 3. Therefore, E is the center of the circle, and any one of these lines is equal to the radius. So here we have described our circle, or the radius of the circle and the center, which is enough to describe a circle. But you could go a little bit further and also notes that if this angle here, ABE, or alpha, if it is larger than BAD or delta, then this semicircle, or this circular segment, is less than a semicircle because the center of the circle is outside of the segment. So this is less than a semicircle. If these two angles are equal, then we have a perfect semicircle. And if this angle is less than that angle, we have a circular segment that is larger than a semicircle, and the center of the circle lies within the segment. And there we have, starting with our circular segments, have described the circles that the segment is part of. And that concludes this video presentation. To see the next presentation, just click the next button.